Hello friends, in today's video, I am going to talk about the closed reduction and percutaneous spinning for proximal humerus structures. So, in our setup, basically the two part proximal humerus structures and the geriatric low energy proximal humerus structures without dislocation, we are using this method that means the closed reduction and percutaneous spinning for definitive treatment. So, in the initial period, we start the pendulum exercises that means up to four weeks, and after four weeks, we start the gradual range of motion exercises to the further extent, and six to eight weeks is the time. When we remove the K wires and full range of motion can be started after that. So I'll be showing you the steps in doing this procedure in some of the cases as requested by some of the viewers. So first of all, you have to be comfortable with the AP and lateral view. In AP view, there should not be an issue, but lateral, the axial view is often problematic, especially when you are going to do everything in a closed manner. In open reduction, you can manipulate the arm in your direct vision and you can get the lateral view. But in case of closed reduction per kidney spinning, the lateral view is critical because if you are not able to visualize it, you will actually displace the fracture in an attempt to get the lateral view. So you can go in further details regarding the technique for getting the axial view when positioning the patient. So you have to keep the C-arm near the head end and then get a view like this then only you'll be able to see the axial view and when seen from the side you have to tilt C arm somewhat like this so the head is not blocking the axial view so you'll get an axial view something like this here you see the head was blocking the axial view but when you try to lift the cephalid part of the C arm upwards it is going to be away from the path of the head and you'll be able to see the proper contour of the proximal humerus in the axial direction you can definitely watch this video in detail that is given in the link below and now coming to the steps for reduction and percutaneous spinning so first of all the deformity we need to see are the varus and the extension so in the frontal plane we see there is obvious varus of the proximal humerus and what you need to do you have to relax the deltoid muscle and the moment you relax the deltoid muscle in most of the cases you will be able to reduce to a near approximate extent by just giving a slight traction in an abducted arm so this is something that we desire and in the lateral view that means the axial view the deformity is in extension that means there is hyper extension of the fracture site the arm goes downwards and there is apex at the anterior part so this is anterior this is posterior and often there is posterior combination so here you see that deformity is something like this so what we need to do we have to flex the arm the moment you flex the arm there should be somewhat approximate alignment between the shaft part and the head part so this is something that we desire here you see some combination is there because often this side is impacted so the reduction maneuvers are quite clear you have to abduct give gentle traction and you have to flex sometimes it is very difficult to keep the arm flexed for a prolonged period and your assistant may get tired so in that scenario what you can do you can simply lower the patient table and put the elbow on a mayo stand a mayo stand is something like this and you can drape it completely and then put the elbow over the mayo stand then lower the operating table by that maneuver you'll be able to flex the arm and that will help in reduction now the second important concern is the safe zone because you see you have to make entries of the wire in this zone to get the hold inside the head this is a lower segment here this is the proximal part so this, this is a simple two part fracture in a geriatric patient so you have to make entry somewhere here but the axillary nerve safe zone is up to 5 cm below the level of greater tuberosity so your wires are too proximal to be placed in this area because often this area comes proximal to the fracture so your entry has to come somewhere here only that means the zone which is below the 5 cm zone and there is an area where the axillary nerve lies so what to do so first of all put a K wire directly over the reduced arm and see what is the desired trajectory for the K wire here the K wire trajectory is going to be lying over this unsafe zone then what you need to do you have to make small stab holes so you can make multiple holes as you desire you can place two three K wires that should be more than sufficient so when you make these holes you have to ensure that you are on the anterolateral part of the arm or you can say the anterior contour of the deltoid muscle you see this is a bulk of deltoid muscle your stab incisions are on the anterior half of the deltoid and after making the stab incisions you have to dilate these holes so that you are going directly over the bone so by that you'll be safe you'll not be injuring the axillary nerve if you see the axillary nerve 
it is coming from the posterior part and then coming anteriorly and then it ends before the deltoid muscle end so you are completely in a safe zone so this area here the points that i've drawn this area is completely safe even if axillary nerve is lying in this zone these entry points on the anterolateral part of the shaft humerus are completely safe you just need to make small stab holes dilate them then place the k-wire so you can make multiple trajectories through these entry points only part that is critical is to make the correct entry so once you have made the entry you can simply titrate the position of the k-wire towards the posterior half or towards the superior part or towards the anterior half like here you see we have placed multiple k wires through the entry points on the anterolateral surface these wires are going close to the calcar and ending in the inferior part of the human head try to keep at least one or two k wires in this area the calcar area because the bone is strong in this area and the wire hold is going to be good and you see the axial view the lateral view you see we have made an entry of multiple anterolateral k wires and they are going all around the head one wire is going in the posterior half one is going almost at the central part and one wire is going towards the anterior part so it depends upon you you can direct the trajectory of the wire as per your desire sometimes the resistance said that it is very difficult to pass the k-wire towards the humeral head when we make a trajectory through the anterolateral surface so here the trick is that you do not drill the wire completely first try to gain hold of the k-wire over the cortex you just make a small dip inside the bone like this you see we have just made a small dip like this then try to make the wire oblique as parallel as possible to the anterolateral margin of the proximal humerus so here we have just made the entry but we have not penetrated the cortex then we try to tilt the wire like this and by that we'll be able to direct the wire towards the area of interest like in this plane the wires are going into the calcar into the inferior half of the humeral head but when we see the axial view these wires are going everywhere in the posterior half in the central as well as the anterior half so this wire this is difficult to place but you can at least place the central k wire and the wire which is going in the posterior half once you are familiar with the technique you'll be able to place wires in different locations as per your interest so we are now clear how to place the lower k wires that means the wires from the diaphysis towards the humeral head now you have to place the wires from the gt towards the diaphysis now here you see the arm was abducted now to place the k wires from the GT towards the diaphysis you have to adduct the arm that's why you have to place these K wires first because then only you'll be able to secure the reduction in slight valgus or neutral alignment once you have placed multiple K wires in this direction then you'll be able to adduct the arm without the loss of reduction so here you see now the GT area is devoid of any bony prominence earlier the acromion was blocking this area now this area is completely safe you only have the insertion of the rotator cuff muscles over this area so you need not to make multiple holes here just two or three holes stab holes are sufficient for placement of k wires so here we have placed two k wires and those wires are going towards the inferior fragment or you can say the medial cortex of the inferior fragment and in axial view also you see the wires are going from posterior superior to the antero inferior direction this is important because if you see the shape of greater tuberosity it is somewhat like this so your wires are going from posterior superior like in this direction towards the anterior cortex you can choose multiple direction as you desire the only critical part is the entry point you have to gain hold in the maximum part of the gt so you have to start from the posterior part then towards the anterior superior part then you'll be able to gain good hold now in some fractures you have the undisplaced or minimally displaced fragment of the gt as well here you see the gt is intact so these wires are more than sufficient here the surgeon has rather placed four k wires in the lower half so they are going to be very much stable and this is the axial view again you see the wires are going in multiple planes there are two in the anterior part and one and two in the posterior part so they are going to keep the fracture in good position that will allow the pendulum movements in first four to six weeks and after four to six weeks you can start with the remaining range of motion as well and in case when the gt you feel is fragmented you can add another k wire through the gt towards the head and that wire is going to be safe only because if you see the safe zones this wire is going somewhere here 
and the nerve location will be in this zone so you are completely safe so this was the case i told you the gt was fragmented so additional k wire was added from the gt tip towards the humeral head but again it is optional because you are already securing the gt towards the diaphysis using multiple k wires we normally use the 2 mm k wires but if the bone stock is large then we can use the 2.5 mm k wires also so you see the initial displacement and after reduction and fixation it is looking like this and healing of the structure the previous one this one is as anticipated you see there's abundance of callus formation the reduction is acceptable in ap as well as axial view in most osteoporotic patients you'll experience some kind of varus collapse but that will be minimal so based on the patient functional demand bone quality that kind of reduction is more than acceptable at least you are preventing the patient from a major open surgery and placement of an implant and also it is cutting the cost to a large extent. k wires are quite cheap while the plate is definitely going to bring more cost. So what I told you in the previous case was a simple fracture in which simple abduction and flexion would result in reduction with addition of some gentle traction. But here this is, an, this is an unstable fracture. You see while it is a two part fracture only, more or less two part fracture only, the shaft part is quite unstable. There is metalization of the shaft and it is going to be difficult to reduce such a fracture because often the shaft part gets impacted inside the head here. And this is the axial view. You see there is extension at the fracture site and the spike of the distal fragment is impacting inside the proximal fragment. Here you can place a shan screw inside the distal fragment that is medialization that is medializing so placement of this shan screw will help you in joysticking this segment like here you see we have tried to pull it laterally so that the medialization is corrected but still there is some varus of the proximal fragment you see the head is facing downwards not towards the glenoid and in axial view still some ex extension as well as translation so what we did we simply flex the arm i told you flexion will improve your reduction in the axial view so by just flexing the arm we were able to correct this translation and some kind of extension at the flexure site this is anterior this is posterior so you see this small clip how we are correcting the translation and extension at flexure site by just flexing the arm you see by just flexing the arm it has become much better earlier it was like this like this and now after flexing the arm it has gone like this and more better like this so this is more than acceptable i told you posterior part will have some fragments because often there is posterior impaction and posterior combination while the anterior cortex is mostly aligned by doing the flexion and now the Varus part has to be corrected. So what you can do, you can place a K wire from the GT towards the head and then tilt the fragment into the valgus and direct this fragment, head fragment towards the glenoid. So one joystick you are using for manipulating the diaphyseal part and one wire joystick you are using to manipulating the head fragment towards the glenoid. And this wire is going to be helpful because this wire will help you in correcting some rotation also. So you see there is some kind of rotation in addition to the virus. So by manipulating this single 2.5 mk wire, we were able to relocate the head towards the glenoid and some rotation that was existing was also corrected. And the moment you see a good reduction, you just pass one k wire from the anterolateral spec in the lower segment towards the head. And after that you can sequentially add the remaining k wires so ultimately this was the assembly that we created using multiple k wires same technique as in the first case and this is the ap view and this is the axial view again we try to place multiple k wires we try to span as many wires in multiple directions here two wires are placed in the superior segment multiple k wires would have been added after this step i don't have the image of that and you see this was the initial radiograph of this patient and after healing and removal of the k wires at six to eight weeks this was the picture so this is more than we expect in these patients again the osteoporotic low energy trauma patients in which we just achieve the union slight virus collapse is going to be there because of the combination but again the functional outcome is going to be great similar case you see metalization is there and this was fixed like this you see a good alignment has been achieved a similar deformation was there the medialization of the shaft was there but here the surgeon didn't have the shan screw available so what he did he used a 2.5 mk wire as the joystick for manipulating the distal fragment so by just doing abduction 
gentle traction and pulling this 2.5 k wire he was able to reduce the metallization of the shaft and after that if you see in the axial view you see the anterior cortex is opening so what he did he just flexed the arm and by doing the flexion he was able to reduce the lateral view image as well and again multiple k wires were placed here the hold was good the bone quality was fine so he used only four k wires again i told you two or three k wires from gt towards the shaft and from shaft towards the head are more than sufficient the purpose of these k wires is only to align the head over the shaft minor translations minor deformations can still happen but they are not going to compromise with the function of the patient so these were some of the cases by which i wanted to show you the steps for k wire fixation you need not to keep the k wires perfectly parallel you can span the k wires in multiple areas you just need to take care about the entry points to be in safe zone so anterolateral area is the good place for making the entries and the other wires are from the GT area and they are going to be safe only because there is no neurovascular structure lying directly over the GT. So I hope this short video on percutaneous spinning of proximal humerus fracture is going to be helpful in your practice. If you have any queries, you can just put those in comments. Thank you.